What's happening, Fish and Friends? Listen, I've got to ask you, do you ever find yourself struggling to figure out what lures you want to take with you on your next trip? Maybe you've got a few lures picked out, but then you're just confused on what colors you need to take for spring fishing. Heck, maybe you're looking to pick up a couple new fancy combos for spring and you have no idea where to start. Well, worry not because this video has got you covered. You know, spring is in the air, bass fishing is picking up all around the nation. It's one of the best times to get out there and catch some fish, especially if you bank anglers. So... Today I'll be covering my top five spring lures that anybody can catch bass on. Now as we go into each one and talk about them a little more, I'll give you some brands that I like and some types. We'll go over color selection to keep it easy and help simplify things. And finally, I'll give you an idea of the combo that I use to fish each one of those lures on. So enough yapping. Probably no surprise at all if uh, you're a fan of the channel, it's going to be a spinnerbait. You know, this was one of my very first confidence lures ever. It's such a great spring lure because you can cover a lot of water around specific targets. You know, you can fish it slow on the bottom if that water is still really cold. You can fish it up toward the top if those fish are fired up and a whole bunch of stuff in between. In fact, the spinnerbait's so good in spring because it mimics a little ball of bait fish. You've got two blades here, you know, blinking and flashing as they're spinning around looking like a couple little bait fish. You've got the larger target in the middle with the skirt that gives that realist realistic kind of, you know, pumping, flowing action when you pop your rod tip. You can even add a trailer to give just a little bit of different secondary action to the lure and some bulk. Now with the profile of the spinnerbait, you know, kind of being tall and slim, slender, it's got these blades that kind of stick right here. It does exceptionally well around standing timber, you know, bringing it by targets, uh, you know, logs and stuff like that. Doesn't do great in grass, uh, you know, grass and the, you know, mossy, slimy stuff can get caught up in here and it just completely kills your spinnerbait. But um, around wood, bigger logs, brush, some spots in brush can be kind of hard. You can still run it on the outside edges of grass. Overall, it's just such a good bait. And, you know, for a beginner, you're just chucking it, whining it, you know, messing with your uh, your tempo, your speed, giving up pops and stuff. Nothing too crazy about this bait to learn it. Now, when it comes to specific brands, I've got a few that I like. Of course, the War Eagle is right on top. It's one that I've thrown uh, a long time. They've got a number of different options. I really like that finesse option. Booyah Covert is a great spinner bait. And uh, speaking of finesse options, they just come out with one, but you'll see that more in another video. I really like the new Strike King Tournament spinner bait. Uh, it's got a hand tied skirt on it, good hardware, doesn't break the bank around, I think like seven bucks, good all-round spinnerbait. The new Berkeley Power Blade is one that I really like, got to throw that the other day. Uh, I think it's going to be one that uh, gets used a lot this year on the combo we'll talk about here in a second. Terminator's got a number of different types of spinnerbaits, uh, and then the Accent spinnerbait's been playing with those. This is the River Special, a little bit larger, but a ton of them out there. Just find a good one that works for you and stays consistent, um, you know, with a color that you like. And speaking of colors, first off, I gotta say, for blades, I don't get overly crazy. Um, generally, I like gold blades in dirtier water. You know, when there's sun, it seems to flash better in dirty water. Cleaner, clearer water, silver seems to work better, but I don't get super, you know, insane about the exact blade size. I'll either go with a double willow or a tandem. So there's like a willow here and then a smaller Colorado. And that's about as crazy I get. I will throw something like this. A larger Colorado blade has a lot more thump, especially in really dirty water. Um, helps you slow down and just give a real big boom, 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 boom for those fish to key in on. But usually I'm just going something like this, a double willow or a little tandem. And then when it comes to colors, white is probably like the all time great. Just an all flat white spinnerbait can mimic so many different things, it's great. Now you get a stain to the water, dirty water, you want something with a little bit of chartreuse or like a green tinge to the water. I feel like chartreuse tends to do really well. Um, and a trailer on here is kind of a give and go. Trailers, I usually stick with something kind of straight or a paddle tail that doesn't have a lot of motion. I only add this if I wanna add a little bit of bulk move a little bit more water, or if I need help casting it, if it's a little uh, windy out, you can add a trailer to add some uh, some weight to it. But usually I'm not a huge soft plastic trailer guy. I tend to run a trailer hook on here if I can get away with it. But if you're around a lot of wooden cover, uh, oftentimes you're asking for a snag with that extra hook. The last color would be a bluegill imitation. Excellent post spawn when those bass are really keen in targeting on bluegill up shallow. If you've not tried a bluegill spinnerbait during that time, give it a go. Now as for the combo, I don't get into anything too crazy. Seven foot to seven foot four, something where you can accurately cast at targets. This happens to be a seven foot four, medium heavy, moderate fast. I want something with a little bit of a soft tip so when that fish grabs it, I tend to load up a little bit before I can really feel it and pull into it and set that hook. Um, for a reel, I like like a five speed reel, six speed reel, whatever you're comfortable with, depending on if you wanna go a little quicker or slow down. My go-to line choice is usually 15 pound fluorocarbon, but that's gonna depend if I'm around real heavy, thick wood stuff, you know, I could go up to 17 or even 20. Um, I just kinda let the dictate cover, or I let the cover dictate that rather. 
All right, lure number two, we've got to talk about a finesse jig. There is just something special about a little tiny, you know, compact finesse cut little jig like this in the cold water that just crushes. You can drag these little things around rocky points, flip it around isolated structure, you know, a piece of wood, a log, drag it along grass lines as long as, you know, you got a, a decently hard bottom. A bunch of different ways you can fish this little guy. Heck, I've even been outfished by Randizzle twice, not once, but twice, where he caught multiple four pounders throwing this on a bed. A simple little finesse jig on a bed. Now things to think of when you're looking at a finesse jig, there's a bunch of different types out there. You've got the little round ball head, the War Eagle heavy finesse jig. That's been the one that my buddy Rand Dizzle, y'all know him, has thrown forever and kicks my butt on the regular with that dang thing. And normally, like I said, we're fishing it around rocky fishing jetties. That ball head does really good around rocks and structure and stuff. Now there are other types out there. Um, this is not a finesse jig, but there's other head types. This is your arky head. You can see how it's turned up there. It's meant more for wood and such. So as you throw that and flip it over wood, it tends to ride up over that, kind of come through stuff a little bit better. Um, that's why I like the, uh, the round ball head for those rocky points and such. I don't think you get hung up nearly as much. Now Berkeley did come out with a little finesse jig that I was throwing last year. I did like that one a lot too. So if you want that more arky style, but still in a small compact little package and profile, that's another good one to go to. Dirty Jigs also has a number of different little compact pitching jigs. This is a little quarter ounce. Trim that skirt up a little bit, give it that finesse cut and it's awesome. And I actually like the Luke Clausen finesse jig. As you can see, it's got that round ball head. The line ties recessed back in there a little bit to help protect it. Uh, and it comes in a 5 16th ounce, which is my favorite for these little finesse jigs. And if you like to tinker and such, this is actually one that I made all on my own. I got the mold from Do It. Uh, I'll leave everything linked below, all the lures, combos, in case you want to look at any of that down below. But this is one that I made, and it's fun because you can put whatever you want on it. You know, I made this like a peanut butter and jelly, but if you have a crazy special color you want to make, that's part of the fun of making your own stuff, and it comes in a 5 16th. And when it comes to jigs, I like keeping it really simple. I like a green pumpkin. A lot of people will kind of switch that out with some sort of brown, but a very natural color, a green pumpkin with a little bit of blue or purple in it for most of my stuff. Now, when the water's darker, I'll go with like a June bug or black and blue. That color really stands out and just makes a good silhouette. Another one to kind of mess with is white. Um, our buddy, old Johnny, messed with a white and red jig and caught a ton of fish on it through the years. Randy's even adopted it uh, and does it. Uh, the you know the dizzle color maybe I'll come out with some of those and do a giveaway but um, keep the color simple also I would think of a jig color that matches your craws in your area because like around here we don't have any of the bright red craws like down in Florida right not to say red wouldn't work here but ours have like this kind of bluish teal tint to the bottom it's so like an Okeechobee craw tends to work around here well um, so find some craws in your area try to mimic that match that color and I think you'll have more success now, when it comes to the rod, you don't need anything insane, but since it is a bottom bait with the finesse, um, if you can afford to go a little bit more expensive on this one, this is one that I would do it on. Bottom contact baits like this, where you might be really having to feel that sensitive strike, go for it. Now, this, for example, is the Karata. This isn't the most you know expensive, craziest rod out there. I got it on sale. Um, the new Shimano rod, seven foot, medium heavy. Again, I like a decently soft tip so you can load these jigs and you can even get into like little micro jigs and stuff. You just have to keep in mind how heavy wire of a hook do I have? Will it hold up to the combo that I'm using it on? So like with these that I made, I jumped up to a little bit heavier hook so I can throw them on a bait caster. Same thing for like the War Eagle heavy finesse jigs. Got a good little stout hook on them. You don't have to worry about bending those out. I have the Shimano Scorpion DC on here. Definitely would not need a, a rig like this. Just the one I had for testing the other day. 7.4 speed, any sort of 7 speed is my favorite because again, I'm really working the jig with my rod. I'm just taking up the line with this. So when I take up that slack line and hit them, 7 speed is kind of a good do it all for me. And then with these little like 5 16 3 8 ounce uh, finesse jigs, I like to start with 15 pound line. You can bump up a little bit, but I think 15 is the best all around. All right, lure number three is something that'll appeal to all those bait fish eating bass. That's going to be a little paddle tail swim bait. Now this is such a great lure to have because it can fill so many different roles when it comes to spring fishing. In that cold water, spring and fall, if you want to slow roll one of these on the bottom on just a little jig head like this, this is the new VMC that's got a little screw on with it. This is perfect. In fact, uh, my buddy Nick Rundle uh, went out last year with me and kicked my butt slow rolling a little swim bait like this one that he made. Keep a pack of these babies in your bag. You can throw them on the back of a spinner bait, chatter bait. Here's one of the little top spins from first gen lures. Works great as a little trailer. 
on those windy days when you might be struggling, even if you just need a little bit of weight, say on a spinner bait, it's great to add some weight back there. This is a fluke, but you can do the same thing with the swim bait and just chop the little paddle tail off. Now, not all swim baits are gonna be created equal. The Kitex kind of the standard. I feel like when people talk about a swim bait, this is relatable. Everybody knows these. There's a bunch of different companies that you know have this rib style type of swim bait, but Something like this with a lot of action in back that can move at a slow speed like a Kitek is great for that cold water. As you're just barely creeping it, you can still get kick out of this. There's like the slick shiner. These are the fat impact, a little bit larger with that rib body, but Kitek's got a number of different types. So just think about the type that you want if you're gonna be moving it fast or if you want like a, a slower body roll, like say a, a hollow body, a, a Bass Tricks or something like that. Um, or if you want a little bit more tail kick in the back, um, on a trailer, but not really from the body. Well, enter one of my all-time favorite swim baits, the Reaction Innovations, either Little or Skinny Dipper, just a size difference, and you can see the whole body up here is solid, so it's not doing anything except for back here. These are not very good for slow rolling, they don't have very good motion, but moving faster or in the back of stuff, they don't really mess with the bait too much, so um, these are also great if you want to do like a, a weighted belly uh, underspin type flash deal or rig it uh, weedless uh, as a bank angler. These are really, really good. So there's different kinds out there. Find one that works for your application. For colors, I don't get super crazy. Dirty water, a straight white. Um, that ribbed is really good too because it helps displace water, um, gives more vibration. The fish can key in on it. I like a shad or a minnow, something not too crazy, a little bit more uh, natural. This is the Arkansas Shiner Kitek. This is the little Yum Scottsboro swim baits. These are nice too, just a little three inch there. That's in the shad color, what do they call this? Rainbow shad, good natural looking little shad color. I don't go too insane with it. I try to match the color of this around. You can always take like a chartreuse dip or marker um, if you want to add something for them to key in on up toward the head of the bait or the tail, just to give it some, uh, some visibility. You can always do something like that, especially if you have like an all white, it'll take any sort of color you put on it. Now when it comes to the combo, I can't really give you an exact because it depends on what you're throwing. You could be throwing a little 2.8 inch Kitek on a little jig head and crushing bass, you know, schooling, chasing little bait fish. You could be throwing something a little larger like this. This is one of the Z-Man diesel minnows or whatever on this VMC. I was throwing this on just a medium power bait caster. You could be throwing a little underspin. Um, you could be using it on a spinner bait with a larger hook, fishing it around cover. Just depends, but I'm gonna say, make sure you match the rod to the size and power of the hook that's on there. Last thing you wanna do is throw one of these on a medium heavy, have a giant bass and bend your hook out because you just went with too big a gear. All right, lure number four is one that's special to me because it can provoke bass to bite even when they don't want to, even when the other lures aren't working. And this happens to be a six sense provoke, no pun intended. We are talking about a suspending or a very slow sinking jerk bait. When you've got those fish coming out from the deep, coming up to those points, primary, secondary points, they're often gonna be on those spots where they can feed up. So, you know, when you've got the real deep water coming up real, 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 real tight to shallow water, they can come up and feed and go right back out. Great place to target fish with this or like a real slow sinking or suspending jerk bait uh, because you're right in the area where those fish are. You know, they're not moved up dirt shallow yet. You've got a lot of fish moving in between and it's simple. You know, you cast this out. Most of them will cast pretty good. The heavier ones like this, the 110 size, cast it out there, twitch, twitch, pause, twitch, twitch, pause, and just keep doing that over and over. So it's not crazy. I think a lot of people see, you know, somebody working a jerk bait and think, oh, that's crazy. How am I ever gonna do that? But it just takes a little practice. Now the big thing with the jerk bait is finding that cadence that works for the time of year and sticking with it. So I said, sticking with a jerk, jerk, pause, you can vary how hard are you popping it, okay? Harder or softer is gonna give it a different erratic action in the water. And then on that pause, I can't stress enough to make sure it's a true pause. When you pop, pop, pop and kill it there, it should just be sitting there doing absolutely nothing. You don't wanna pop, pop and move your rod tip so it goes and looking all dumb. It's when that lure's just sitting there doing absolutely nothing paused right there. That is 90% of the time when I'm getting a bite. I'll pause it, be waiting, I'll go to pop it again and I can feel weight on there. So it's that, that fish just sitting there doing nothing that really crushes those fish and makes them wanna bite. And then also that erratic darting action that is really hard to get out of other lures. You know, that bait fish is looking like it's dying and then just sitting there completely still. Now, when it comes to brands, a bunch of different really good ones out there. This is the Sixth Sense Provoke. A little bit larger profile does really good. I like that one. I'm a Flit is one that I've had really good luck on in the past. The Berkeley Stunna. Now, this is a little bit slower sinking, so it does sink down, but still great if you're giving it just above those fish and it's just barely, barely sinking down to them. Rapala Husky Jerk is an all-time classic. Rapala Ripstop. And of course, there's like the Mega Bass Vision 110 that's really expensive. I just started messing with them last year, so I can't say like, 
go out and buy them. A lot of people tell you that, but I've had just as good a luck uh, on these. Colors, I keep it simple and kind of break it into three categories. Low light, you know, early morning, if it's cloudy, I go with an opaque, helps create that silhouette. Once it starts to get sunny, maybe a little bit more calm, I don't have as much chop or wind, you know, kind of breaking it up. I go with the translucent, more see-through. Um, Lucky Craft Pointer is another good one. The Ghost Minnow Color in Lucky Craft is such a good clean, clear water color. Um, clear water, cleaner stuff when they're really, 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 you see it from a far away. Um, that ghost minnow or a translucent, you know, bait fish like this is awesome. Then if it's sunny, I got a little wind and kind of a little bit more stained water. I'll go with the gold. I think it shows up better or like a silvery chrome uh, in cleaner water. Once you've got that sun, kind of some ripples, uh, you know, a little bit of wind on top to help break it up. They're really just seeing that flash and coming in and crushing it. So keep it simple with those three. For the combo, I like to go with a little bit shorter rod, especially for bank fishing, a 6'8", up to like a 7'4" foot is usually what I like for jerkbait fishing. A medium light up to a medium. I don't really go above that. Medium light is great for those baits that have a little bit smaller hook. The I'm a flit. Pretty small hook, light wire. I'm not usually fishing this right in, you know, the thick, heavy grass and cover. Maybe just above it, usually on the outsides of it. So I don't need a crazy heavy rod. I can let that rod really bend over and fight that fish and play it a little bit on the jerk bait, you know, out on those points and such. Um, so medium light, especially good for those little bit smaller jerk baits to help load it and cast it. Um, or just kind of a regular medium if you're throwing a lot of these. You know, 110 size, perfect for that. I'll go with the six or seven speed reel. Doesn't really matter because you're moving the bait with your rod. Uh, just depends if you want to take up more or less line when you crank. And then 10 or 12 pound fluorocarbon is my go-to fluorocarbon because it helps kind of keep that bait down. The smaller line you go with, the deeper you're going to be able to get that jerk bait too. So keep that in mind. You know, if you're going with a smaller jerk bait, you might even drop down to eight pound line. But uh, that is the jerk bait. All right, lure number five is one that whether you're a beginner, advanced angler, on tour, trying to win money, it doesn't matter who you are, they catch fish for anyone, and that's going to be the old handy stick bait. Now, again, the beauty of these is there's a number of different kinds, and they're versatile. So um, usually when I'm wacky rigging a little bit smaller finesse technique, I'll go with something a little bit smaller, slimmer. This is the uh, the missile baits. It's the 48. I had to look real quick. I, I feel ashamed. I completely forgot the name of it. Uh, or like a little four inch stick bait. Yum just brought out some new colors. That'll be in another video coming soon. But I like to go with the smaller profile when I'm wacky rigging. Or you could just use, you know, your regular five inch um, Gary Yamamoto, Cinco, Yum Dinger. There's a whole bunch of different brands. The BPS. Um, Bass Pro Sticko uh, is another great buy for the money. Something like this. Now, I like the wacky rig in spring when I'm spot fishing, target fishing. Those fish are moving up from, you know, the deep. They're getting up in there, getting ready to make those beds and stuff. Or even after they've made beds and start moving around. This is such a good option because there's so many different things you can do with it. If you've got a fish on a bed, wacky rig is a great way to catch them. Got fish cruising back and forth where you throw any big lure that splashes, they take off. Throwing one of these in there weightless, real quiet, real stealthy, great way to get those to grab it. You can fish grass edges with this. When I do grass edges, I actually like to go to a screw in the nose hook instead of a wacky rig. Screw in the nose like this, that way when you're pulling it through grass and stuff, it's screwed in there at the end, it's not running down the side of your hook. Uh, great way to target grass lines. You can skip these under docks and overhangs. So many different ways you can fish this thing. Now, if you can't tell from the colors, uh, one of my favorites uh, is probably gonna be green pumpkin if I only had one to do. This is like a, a darker green pumpkin watermelon. This is actually one that I made, but some form of green pumpkin is usually my go-to. You can always dip it in a little bit of dye. A little bit cleaner water on those sunny days, um, like a watermelon or something with a lot of flake. That sparkle, it's crazy how much it shows up. I was actually throwing one of these post spawn a couple years ago with Brando, watermelon red. And the way that red really came out in that sun and that clean water was nuts. And then for a third one, I would go with like a black or a June bug. Um, I like going up to this, the Reaction Innovations Pocket Rocket. It's a little bit larger, a little more, more, bit more bulbous. It's got some ridges on it to help move water. So in that dirtier water, or if I'm really trying to draw attention to it, um, this is one I like with like a black June bug. Um, Tramp Stamp is a good one that they make. It's like a black and blue green pumpkin, but the old stick bait. And again, this is one where I can't give you like a perfect combo. For me, uh, if I'm wacky rigging like those smaller ones, I like to go with a medium light or a medium power spinning rod. Fast action, 25 or 3,000 size spinning reel on it, and I'm going 10 or 15 pound braid to an 8 to 12 pound leader, just depending on how thick of stuff I'm around. I'll bump up to a 12 if I'm like skipping under docks or under overhangs where I might get caught just a little bit, but I keep it pretty finessey, pretty simple. You could certainly throw like one of these. 
This guy I'll throw all day on just a bait caster, a medium heavy bait caster with some 15 pound fluorocarbon. Notice I've got a little bit heavier wire hook to make sure I can handle that in case I get the fish in any thick grass or cover or anything, usually be able to keep them pinned with that. So listen folks, do me a favor, comment below. What do you think of my top five picks for anybody going out to fish? Doesn't matter if you're a pro beginner, these will work for anybody. Comment below and let me know if, if you agree or if you think there's one that I left out and I'm absolutely crazy. That's the awesome thing about bass fishing is fishing is not always two plus two equals four. Uh, it can equal a bunch of different things because there's a number of different ways to do it. It's not like math where there's only one correct answer. Unless you're like some people on the internet, then it's their way or the highway. But today's subscribe fishing friend is Ken Starks. Ken Starks dropped a, a few comments I seen come through not too long ago talking about fishing a jerk bait and some spring fishing. And it's that time for everybody. So I don't care who you are, get out and do some fishing. So that's enough for me. I need to edit. Thanks for watching. And until next time. Mm -hmm.